Hey guys, George from Empire Legal. Big topic this week, new seller's disclosure regime. It's had heaps of hype in the media. I'm talking through in a Loom style video, page by page, the seven pages of the form two, the new form coming 1st of August next year. We're gonna get into it straight after this. Educate yourself, it's coming. Make sure you like and subscribe guys. We keep everyone with Queensland property up to date with all of the latest stuff going on. Smash the like button, follow along, educate yourself. Let's get into it. Okay, hello everybody, George Suris from Empire Legal. A bit of a different video this week. We've done a couple of looms like this in the past when we need to get a bit more technical and dive in on a certain topic. Uh, this one's obviously a huge one. This has had heaps of time in the media, the seller's disclosure statement. This is the new seller's disclosure pack. It's a form two and it's coming into force on the 1st of August, 2025. So we've got a little bit of time up our sleeve but really, we do have to get a uh, bit of knowledge here so that we're not blindsided when the 1st of August creeps around, which always happens faster than we think it will. All right, so let's just jump in. First thing, this warning to the buyer. So there's important legal information here. You need to understand what you're signing. You need to seek legal advice. You should not assume you can terminate the contract after signing if you're not satisfied with the information in this statement. So this has to be given before the buyer signs, the seller signs first and provides this pack of information to the buyer. A disclaimer again at the start. So we're not going to have information about flooding, structural soundness of the building or pest, current or historical use of the property, current or past building or development approvals for the property, any planning law limitations, any services that are connected or the presence of asbestos. So it's flagging that people should do their own due diligence before signing as that's not going to form part of this information pack. This is a seven page document. It's actually available straight off the government website now. So anyone can jump on and download it, but let's get everybody familiar with what has to be filled out. Think of this similar to like a disclosure statement on a community title scheme, but it's going to apply to all land in Queensland for a sale. So part one, pretty straightforward. Seller puts in their information, so name, property address, lot and plan description. Then it asks if the property is part of a CTS, Community Title Scheme, or BUGDA, which is Building Unit Group Title Scheme. So if yes, part six has to be filled out later. If no, part six is not required, and we're just talking about freehold land. All right, next section, part two. The seller gives or has given the buyer the following. A title search, you have to give that. So make sure this is like a checklist, yes you do. A copy of the plan of survey, same deal. Yes, you have to give that. Next, registered encumbrances. So if there's any that may affect the use of the property, examples, uh, easements, covenants, leases, mortgages. Then unregistered encumbrances. So if the vendor knows there are any encumbrances not registered on title that will continue after settlement, that's disclosed there. A good example here is say, for example, there could be sewer or stormwater infrastructure that's not necessarily on the title, but when you do a dial before you dig or a prop check or something of the equivalent, it appears, or the vendor has knowledge that it's there, they have to disclose. Next section, unregistered lease. So if the unregistered encumbrance is an unregistered lease, the details are as follows, start and end, date of the term, amount of rent and bond, and whether there's a new option. And if the unregistered encumbrance is created by an agreement in writing and it's not an unregistered lease, a copy of the agreement is given with any relevant plans. So again, if applicable, that has to be given. And if there's any unregistered oral agreement, the details have to appear here. Next section, statutory encumbrances. So are there any statutory encumbrances? Yes, no. If yes, explain what they are. Residential tenancy or rooming accommodation. So we should all be pretty familiar with this now as these new laws have come in with uh, the rent increase not being allowed within a 12 month window. Is the property subject to a residential tenancy agreement or a rooming accommodation agreement? Yes or no. If yes, when was the rent last increased with the date here? Then a disclaimer saying that it has to be at least 12 months since the last rent increase. All right, on to page three, part three land use, planning and environment. A warning to the buyer. You may not have any rights if the current or proposed use of the property is not lawful under the local planning scheme. You can obtain further information uh, from the local government. So the zoning has to be put down here. 
Again, if this is unknown, this can be looked up on something like RP data, transport proposals and resumptions. So if the lot is affected by a notice issued by the Commonwealth state or local government about any sort of resumption of land, so transport and main roads, Again, if you're in a back street of a quiet suburb, probably unlikely, but if you've gotten any correspondence, if you're on a main road or an arterial, that they're going to resume that land, so it has to be disclosed. And then a copy of the notice must be given at the same time. Next, contamination and environmental protection. So contaminated land or anything that is protected. So is it on the register? Yes, no. And following notices. So if there's anything for a site cleanup, environmental enforcements or transitional environmental programs. Again, if this applies to your property, you'll have notices and you'll know about it. If so, you must disclose. Next section, probably pretty familiar with these next few. We've seen them in our REIQ contracts. So is there a tree order affecting the property? Yes, no. If yes, you've got to give a copy of the order. Heritage, if it's on the Queensland Heritage Act, register or the Commonwealth version, so is there any heritage over the property, yes, no. And flooding, it specifically says here that flooding can be obtained from the local government and it's outside of the scope of this disclosure statement. So at this point, this is still a buyer beware situation where the buyer should do their own due diligence for flooding. It's all free and it's online, it's simple Queensland mapping, people should just jump on and have a look. Uh, next section vegetation, habitats, and protected plants. So this information can be obtained from the government website. Part four, building and structures. So the seller does not warrant the structural soundness of buildings or improvements on the property, or that the buildings have the required approval, or that there is no pest infestation affecting the property. So a building and pest is still huge, guys, and obviously if you have any concerns about our final approvals for any works that have been done, undertaking that beforehand, all right, swimming pool, again, should be familiar for most people here. Is there a pool? Yes, no. Is it on a shared lot? Yes, no. Is there a pool compliance certificate given? Yes, no. Or if not, a notice of no pool safety given. If this stuff's wrong, it's gonna give the buyer a continuing right to terminate and possibly to pursue the vendor for any losses suffered. So it's critical that we get this form right. If you get it wrong, I'm sure you'll only do it once because it will cost you a deal. Next section, owner builder. So has there been an owner builder permit in the last six years? Yes, no. Um, if yes, then there's a one page form that has to be given. I've done a blog on this uh, last year, so you can just Google owner builder Empire Legal and that should pop up if you just Google it. Otherwise it's in the blog section of our website. All right, nearly there guys, notices and orders. So unsatisfied show cause notice. If there is, you need to disclose it. The seller has been given a notice or order that remains in effect from a state, local or commonwealth government, court tribunal or other authority requiring work, work to be done or money to be spent. If yes, you must give a copy of this so that the buyer knows what they're getting into. Uh, this won't apply to the majority of people listening here, but if, it's a co if it is a commercial office building of more than a thousand square metres, you need a building energy efficiency certificate. And again, another disclaimer saying that the seller does not warrant any um, asbestos, whether that's there or not. So buyer beware with asbestos. All right, rates and services. So I need to put the amount of the rates of the most recent rates notice and the date range. Or if it's an exempt lot, you have to put that there. I mean, I haven't really seen one of them before, so pretty unlikely. All right. Next section, water, same deal. So water notice and date range. If it's no separate water service, estimate of the total amount. All right, two pages to go. This is that part six section we were talking about before for community title scheme and bugta group title. So warning, if the property is part of a community title scheme or bugta, scheme and you purchase the property, you will become a member of the body corporate for the scheme with the right to participate in significant decisions about the scheme and required to pay contributions towards the body corporate's expenses in managing the scheme and comply with the bylaws. So basically, if you're buying in a body corporate, you're part of a community title, it's a group environment, right? So is the property in a community title scheme? Yes, no. Easiest way to check this one, guys, is if there's a title search, it'll say, 
if it is, so do a title search. Community management statement. A copy of the most recent community management statement is given to the buyer. Yes, so you've got to give that. You've got to get a copy of the CMS. This is a big change. We've never had to do this before. You can get the CMS, contact the body corporate, and they can help you get it. Next one, section 205, body corporate certificate for the lot given to the buyer. So this is like the section 206 disclosure. So it's going to give you all the information about that property. Every selling agent that sells community title scheme should be familiar with this. If no, an explanatory statement is given to the buyer that states it's not attached and the reason under section 6 as to why they haven't been able to obtain a copy. I wouldn't be relying on this, I'd be making sure you get one. Statutory warranties. So if you enter into a contract, you'll have implied warranties under the BCCMA, Body Corporate Community Management Act. Is the property included in Bugda? Yes, no. Similar concept here. Is there a body corporate certificate? Yes, no. Last section, guys. So seller signs. Remember, seller must sign first, otherwise buyer can get out of the contract. Next section, buyer acknowledging they've been given this disclosure statement and they've got all the information. So they've signed that. And once that's done, that's the end. So any questions, please send me an email, georgianempirelegal.com.au. Apologies, that was my wife in the background just heading off to work, so please ignore that in the final video. Obviously, huge, huge change, guys. These seven pages, we're going to have to get very, very familiar with them. Good news, we've still got about 10 months. Again, any questions, please get in touch. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep in mind that all advice is general in nature and does not constitute legal advice. This is authorized by George Sirius Empire Legal, Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia.